Welcome back to the Heroes Global Championship. It has been an exciting morning so far. Fnatic vs. Method, a great series. If you have a chance, check out the VODs. Fnatic earning a victory over Method, but Method sure is looking scary. And then, of course, we got information on my Eve, and I am still freaking out about that hero. Yeah, I'm a little bit blown away as well. Yeah. It's already in... If you look at Zero Tool right now, and you look at some of the uh, games that the pros play on their personal streams when they use that in Hero League, Imagine them, players of that caliber on that hero. That is a blood in the making. Yeah. Wow. Looking so, forward to that. Yeah, me too. Like, I'm, I'm waiting for the moment when we have Snitch just completely pop up. <laughs> Looking forward to it, but we have more to look forward to as we get ready for our second series of the day. Here are the standings that have been updated so far. Fnatic climbs to the top here with Team Liquid with that 2-0 they just earned. Diamond Scan will be facing off today, though, against Team Dignitas, who is number three right now and looking to tie up that top three with their own 2-0. Yeah, it's going to be uh, very challenging for Diamond Skin to win this one or take maps here. Dignitas is the team that everybody has been saying, the one to beat, the one that everybody expects to take the top of the standings. And of course, there's always upsets that happen. We all remember what was going on when the playing Darks back then took down Fnatic yeah. and uh, were able to win that series. So uh, it's not a guarantee, but it's definitely uh, going to be a bit of an uphill battle. So Diamond Skin, they have to really show up today. They have to play at their best. And then they have a shot, but Dignitas is the team that everybody is looking to right now to dominate the series. And they have to do a bit, make a bit of a statement happen here. If they would lose a couple of maps against uh, Diamond Skin right now, that would of course also signal to other teams that are aiming for these top one, top two spots um, that there are weaknesses to be exploited. Yeah. Well, while we get ready to look at the schedule here, I, I'm a little upset for Diamond Skin, man. Well, first week they had a face off against Method, who has proven to be a powerful team, and now they have to face off against Dignitas. Yeah. A Hard start to the season for them, but I'm sure they want to come out and prove themselves. Later on, North America, Tempest Storm and Team 12 will open our Friday with Gillyweed and J-How bringing you the action. And afterwards, Team Freedom and Heroes Hearth to finish the day. Yeah, Tempest Storm versus Team 12 is definitely something to watch. So if you're currently tuning in from Europe and uh, you don't normally watch a lot of HGC North America, you should definitely stick around after we're done with the European side of HGC because that is definitely one of the most anticipated matches that we had for a long time ever yep. since the roster changes kicked in and it's really going to tell a lot about who is going to be coming out on top of HTC North America and who will be the favorite to go to all the offline events. So it's definitely one of those games and you want to keep your eye on. We'll keep an eye on that, but let's go ahead and focus on our match upcoming. Diamond Skin taking on Team Dignitas and our players are here to speculate about the match. I think we were very, very surprised with how well we performed in China. We had some really good scrim sessions. We got to play with KSV a lot and Ballistic, so we definitely had really uh, good scrim opponents who already had a lot of experience, which I think accelerated our improvement like, a lot more than we necessarily thought it would. Looking into the new season, my personal goal would be, I, I recently rose up to support now, and I'm going to be the Lucio running around. I have to make sure that my mechanics are on point, and the support has actually been sort of a blast for me, especially in China. Uh, the current heroes, you kind of feel like you have a huge impact on the game, almost more than the, the solo lane role I was before. Uh, I was open to actually take the support role, but uh, I don't think I was uh, significantly like better at him at this role. I think we had different strengths, but uh, he was disrupted before, and I think he's more talented than me and would have a bigger success uh, going to support but yeah it wasn't my decision alone to have it this way um, i'm the support player for team diamond skin and i recently took up the role of shot caller and drafter so that's kind of new to me after an older team had left after the roster swaps. So it's kind of new for me as well but i try to give my best and try to improve because it's really important for the team I mean, you have a huge weight on your shoulders, but at the same time, like if you need help, you can always ask for your teammates uh, for input or anything. Like they're always here to help because you like your team. You're not a single player in the HCC, so they kind of lift that weight a little bit. Dignitas, I think, will be the most consistent team and probably hold the number one slot. But if they're not careful, I'm sure we can find a way to beat them.
What happened to my personality infused wubby? Where's uh, we're gonna smash him talk that we had last week? There's, mm, I mean, that was different, right? That, that was different. That was still good. I want personality every week, Wubby. Personal challenge did to you, Did you man. see him smile on the internet? He did. He had a little smirk. It there started to go, go up, and they cut it. It's probably the editor's fault. Let's blame it on that. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll go ahead and get ready for game at number one here. The Battleground is ready in this best of five series. It's going to be the map Dragon Shire. Dignitas with the pick, meaning that we'll have a diamond skin with first pick. This is where we saw diamond skin, or diamond skin debut last week. They pulled out the Thrall composition. It didn't pan out well for them, but you see that... Diamond Skin is willing to bring out their own flavor here in the HEC. Yeah, as you said before, it's a rough week for them, or a rough opening into uh, Phase 1, because they played against Method first, now they're facing off against Dignitas. It's one of those was one of those starts into Phase number 1 where you can say, first of all, okay, it's rough because you go up against some of the best teams. At the same time, it also allows you if you lose these games, it's fine. If you learn enough from them uh, about the meta and also about where you need to improve, that's definitely already going to be an edge. And let's not forget, that, as they stated in the video, if Dignitas gives them a chance, they're going to take this. So this is an experienced team. These are experienced players. And there's very little information known about them since we have, for example, now Robot Oba on the team too. Can Diamond Skin become the students and eventually take on the teacher in this best of five series. Let's find out here as Dignitas is definitely on a reign right now. When it comes to teamwork coordination and execution, they were dominant last week and many have spoke about them behind the scenes and it seems like they're continuing that trend. Snitch being an absolute killer on this team, teaming up with Poik has been deadly. JPL making sure to force the engages and Zelia. Someone that I thought we were going to be in a situation we were in last year, where we were all eyes were on him. Zelia's new to the team. How's he going to fit in? And he delivered. But this year, I was wondering, okay, well, we can play support. And day one, I have zero doubts about this kid playing support. Yeah, Zelia played extremely well. And we not only saw him in China do extremely well on Lucio, but also when you looked at his Malfurion plays last week, that was very impressive. 3v5, yeah. Comes With the, talking about Malfurion, like, he really shot up in priority a bit more this weekend, as we've seen him in the previous series as one of the earlier support picks. Now we have him even as a first pick taken on the side of Diamond Skin. And we see Uther again. Now, as we said before, Uther is currently, including the series that we just had previously between Method and Fnatic, at a 6 and 1 win record. So he's looking very, very impressive, and especially in the combination with Greymane, he, of course, is extremely strong since he can provide the Divine Shield. I am curious to see if the Anubrak will be something that becomes contested when you see an Uther. The combo of Anubrak Cocoon into an Uther Benediction stun at 16 has been showing up quite often as of late, so I'm wondering if that will be something that we have taken away in the future to make sure that combo isn't as deadly. Yeah, and talking about combos, Tracer banned out. Since we've seen Tracer paired a lot with Malfurion, that's one of the themes that We've seen Dignitas run, just to give one example, but we've also seen it in this series before. So right now, this is something where Dignitas is at least a bit worried and don't want that to be an option for Diamond Skin, so they ban her out right away. Whereas for Diamond Skin, they could attack that front line as you've been talking about it. That they could. What would they want to get rid of? ETC wasn't in our last series, but still one they can pick up. The Anubara combo has been growing in terms yeah. of win rate. Muradin as well, since it's one of those heroes that JPL loves to play, and that's also what they chose last time. So Muradin is something that definitely is at least in the back of your head when you think about, okay, what tank could Dignitas try and lean on? Top lane is something they can also pressure. Top lane, options, Leo, Malfiel. It's going to be the Chromie. Chromie banned out here for Dimus, Diamond Skin. Uh, interesting that they went with that. Granted, there's a gray main already to kind of set precedent for that. We've seen it as a combo, and there's still Johanna up and available. So really, if Dignitas wanted to, they can move into Chromie and Johanna and really control the map. Uh, so Diamond Skin just getting rid of that damage dealer instead. Yeah, for me, with the Team Dignitas, it's always interesting to see what kind of tank they pick as a main tank, mm. because they are one of the teams that oftentimes deviates a bit from what we've seen the rest of the meta play. We've had a huge priority on Johanna, for example. We've seen them every now and then fall back into Stitches as a hero, and Muradin, of course, is prioritized by them even higher than by other teams. Kind of everybody plays Muradin, but it feels like Dignitas is more willing to play him as the solo tank or the main tank. Well, they will be having a uh, separate tank here with Dehaka and Hanzo picked up here for Dignitas. It's so weird to me to not be saying Zelia isn't playing that Dehaka. He was a treat to watch 
last year on the character. Instead, we will be having a switch up with the Dahaka Beam Plate. Diamond Skin on the fourth and fifth pick up. Going to be needing a little bit more damage here. You want to finish her whenever you're having that gold dan because he's a great opener. But getting kills himself, unless you pull him into a keep or a fort, pretty difficult to pull off. I want to highlight some other thing now that we have Dignitas picking Hanzo. First of all, Hanzo has picked towards the end of the draft. Mm -hmm. But also, if you look at today's games, we've been talking last week about how most teams expected Hanzo to play a lesser role in the drafts and in the games because he saw a pretty huge involvement rate. But overall, his win ratio was significantly reduced. And as we could see in the previous series, he's not as much of a focus anymore. So he makes appearances in the draft, but he's not this high priority where we see him banned out early on as a first ban, or then maybe even uh, being uh, picked as a first pick. So that's definitely interesting to observe that the teams after the first and are saying like, Hanzo, well, yeah, we kind of figured him out. We know how to, how to deal with him. And it's not this oppressive position that he has in the meta as many feared. Diamond Skin seems to really favor this fall stat. Second time they're picking out on Dragonshire. I was expecting more of a melee assassin or someone that could jump into the fight and get a kill. But Falstead here. And one of the best things about it last week is we did have some impressive Mighty Gust from Dark Moth playing mm -hmm. the character. So it seems that they are on top of the idea of playing Falstead and getting those Mighty Gusts to engage or force fights that might not be favorable for the opposing team. Yeah, and Anubarag, as we said before, he's still doing extremely well, has the highest win ratio when we're looking at tanks, sitting at above 70% still, so doing very well here. And Muradin, we talked about him before. JPL really likes the hero, and he shows that again on Dragonshire, so we have another Dwarf game. So the big jumps over the walls coming in here as the Dwarf shows off his hops. JPL looking for those engages early, especially on that Gul'dan, or even the Falstad on the top lane probably going to be around that area. Uh, so looking at the draft here, how does Diamond Skin find kills? Will it have to be the Mighty Gust? Will it have to be the Warfi? They have a lot of engagement engage tools as well. They run again a combo with Anubarak and Arthas where you can ga engage with Anubarak and then follow up with Arthur. So the damage output is interesting to me because I'm not quite sure I have... Oftentimes when you talk about Falset, he can really do a lot of work, but if you have someone uh, like Raymond on the other side, you can pressure Falset back. So the damage comes mainly from Gul'dan at this point. Once that we have enough stacks on Season Marksman towards the later stage of the game, it's easier to put that on-point damage on the target and get the kill. But I feel they're going to work a lot around isolation. Maybe drop a Cocoon and a Mighty Gust, isolate the target, and then try and take it down. Yeah, and you also have the option to fall up into a Horrify as well if the Mighty Gust isn't available. So they have kind of covered their bases a little bit. But looking over to Team Dignitas, they have a composition that they have shown in the past that is tried and true. With their global being available, they should be able to handle the experience gap and kind of rotate around their opponents as much as possible. Let's go ahead and hop into it here. Game number one, Team Dignitas versus Diamond Skin. Dignitas on a roar of games lately, dominating with a 3-0 last week. Can they continue the trend against Diamond Skin, who has had a couple of uh, poor matches themselves as of last week? We're heading into our first game on Dragonshire with Digna starting to the left in blue. It's Poik on Greymane, Zelia on Uther, JPL on Murden, Wubi on Dehaka, and Snitch on Hanzo. On the right side in the red, Diamond Skin. Wolf Joe playing the Malfurion, Nande on Arthas, Darkmark on Falstad, Robadoba playing a new Barak, and Rostmag will be your Gul'dan. Gul'dan has been banned out quite consistently over the past few games here, and he's been doing really well as a mage in Europe. Six wins, four losses, has been involved in 72% of the games, banned in uh, a third of the games, and then, of course, that trend continued in the series with Fnatic early on. But here, Diamond Skin has a chance to show him off. And after level 10, that horrifies what we're looking out for. For now, the battle in the mid lane here. The attempts already to get a lockdown with Stormbolt or Howling Blast, but both teams are unsuccessful. So, no early game kill yet. If you're interested in that, Team Dignitas has to be better clear at the start with the Cocktail and the Greymane compared to the Gul'dan, who's usually really good at clearing that wave. Bit of a clash between the two, but nobody comes out too far ahead. It's all about soaking and heading back to the lanes. Already, Greyman is poised and set up to move in for the 
giants that should be spawning in about five seconds. We'll see if he's going to move into that right away, as Falstead seems to be doing the same on the right. Yeah, the last time that we saw Dignitas on the map, they had some really interesting timings on the camps in the early game. That was a huge problem for Trick when they went up against them. So uh, since then, things have, of course, changed a bit. I don't also expect this to uh, be mirrored again in this match. But especially a good push around the night camp can be very powerful. At this point, though, it's global play that we're looking at. And apparently, Diamond Skin with the first kill in the game. Great move here by Darkmok, utilizing the global on Falstad, moves up, and together they get the kill against the Haka. Team Dignitas intends to answer back by working their way into the giant from the bottom right, and they'll be able to steal away. Zelia grabbing point, Robo Jobo goes for the engage, but he gets stunned out, and a new Barak gets picked off. Already two kills in the match. Yeah, really early on, and it feels that Nuburak was initially intending to go onto the camp and try to fight for it, but he went in a bit too late, and that also pinned the two uh, Siege Giants against him, of course. So right now, an exchange in kills, slight lead for Dignitas. They also have the camps at the bot lane, both of them taken, so that's something Diamond Skill had to take care of, and uh, will be now against Nanda at the top, and this time it's Dignitas who brings in the second hero. We're having JPL forcing Nanda back on Arthur. So rotation is a bit late, and actually, Dignitas is rotating way faster, having four heroes against one now up at the top lane, but they don't get the kill. Still a clean attempt, having Wubby and JPL pretend that they pulled back after the fight, saying, okay, you got away, Arthas, you're fine to go. Arthas for a second turned around, and that allowed for Uther and Grimmie to come in and get that stun. Sadly, Arthas a bit too tanky, couldn't get the kill, especially under turret, but still, Dignitas working together and attempting to secure that takedown. Meanwhile, Diamond Skin grabs the bottom side, but already, Dignitas is starting to take a slight lead in experience. Yeah, they're doing well here, and their rotations are very, very clean. We have Deep Roots taken again, but Malfurion this time went for the uh, Celestial Alignment on level 1. So a slight change in the Malfurion setup, but for now, Shrines are active once again, and Diamond Skin is establishing themselves very heavily at the bot lane. The problem that is coming in for them is really this camp that Poik is taking now. With him grabbing the camp and the rest of the team still holding uh, the shrines, making sure that there's no Dragonite, JPL, the Stone Bolt, that push at the top lane is going to force them back and force them to react. We'll see if they react in time. Wobby takes over the shrine on the top side, so the dragon's not able to be grabbed by Falstead as he was trying earlier. And Diamond Skin holding their own on the bottom, but the rest of the map seems to be the issue for them. Yeah. This will get better later on when they're able to get their stack set up here for the Falstad, who has a decent chunk at the moment, 9 to 10, as he continues to work them in. Yeah, this is definitely one of the big aspects against Muradin as well. If you are able to work these auto attacks in later on, and the longer the game goes, the better. And of course, Falstad is going to be a big part of this. Right now, he is not as much of a threat just yet. Up to the top lane, though, again, the collapse onto Arthas. And he falls. Well done by Dignitas. Good rotations, getting the kill in there. And in the meantime, we're having a bit of action also at the bot lane where Gul'dan is constantly pinned down and has to just push the waves out. Even the second here as Malfurion falls, Dignitas definitely turning up the heat at this point. Yeah, this is looking very reflective of what we saw last week with Diamond's getting against Method. Now, when 10 came around, they got a little bit better on their engages, but Mighty Gus had to be used to save teammates. They're positioning a little bit off. It seems like the rotations just aren't up to par with the teammates that they're hitting. Yeah, on the same side, we have Anubarak with his talent choices going for Under King in the subterranean shield. So it's really that heavy engage that they are currently looking for. And that just plays again into the uh, old synergies that we've talked about earlier, where you can drop Kuhn, gust the opponents away, try and blow a target to pieces. Howling Glass can set that up quite easily, for example, after the cocoon is over. And you could even commit to a horror fight. So there's a lot of resources that Diamond Skin has to get an early kill. The question just remains, are they falling too far behind? Because that Dragonite is doing work for Dignitas. They are closing in on level 10 already. And all the turrets are already burned down. Multiple people on the bottom have to deal with that Dragon, which is allowing Team Dignitas to work their way inch by inch over to level 10, which should net a port later on, especially with how far behind Diamond Skin is. It's actually kind of monumental how far ahead Dignitas is. Yeah, it's a bit ridiculous at this point. They are nearly... I mean, they are one and a half levels ahead at level 10. That's insanely impressive. Three kills against one. You can really tell that their rotations and then the entire way that they play the macro game are way superior at this point. And Diamond Skin is pressured back. They have a very rough... Look how far in Dignitas moves with the 10 now. They can easily jump behind forwards and they force Diamond Skin back. So at this point, Dignitas realizes one and a half level lead. We have a rogue abilities. Let's be as aggressive as we can and make sure that we get something out of this lead. 
dying skin though, not throwing in the towel, realizing, okay, we have people in the top lane because we're gonna do it. Grab these giants, we're gonna soak the experience that we can. And Newbuck's in the middle, he has the best escape available for their team in case he does get caught, being able to uh, disengage with the burrow charge. And the rest of the team is working on the other part of the map, grabbing the knights on the bottom side so they can have those pushing in, but mostly to keep that away from their opponents who are now in the middle lane already working on a fort. Yeah, getting the camp here is something I really like from Diamond Skin. They see four heroes up at the top, so their first reaction is, let's try and get at least a few camps down here. We know they can't reach us fast enough, so maybe we can make a bit of a play there. So they get the camp, that's already worth quite a bit. They get the level 10 as a result, since Night Camp takes down the tower, and now they finally have their heroic ability. So at this point, with Malfurion and his Twilight Dream, and also with the combos around Cocoon with Ghast and Horrify, there are chances for Diamond Skin to get kills, and let's face it, they, they need some. They need something to claw their way back into this. They definitely need some momentum, and I want to see if they're going to try and open up soon here on their opponent. Sadly for them, there isn't a major objective for them to contest to force that. The Night Camp already grabbed in the top left, and the Giants in the bottom left for Digging Toss mean that they won't be in those scenarios to get caught. The Night Camp's being burned already, so Diamond Skin will have to force the issue somewhere, and that might be around the Shrine phase, which is a little bit more difficult to pull off. Yeah, it's also, they have the tools with the Nubarak. The Under King in particular allows you to dive really deep and try and get that kill, or at least set it up. So they need a bit more damage and only... Well, Rosmic is there. He looks a bit surprised. Okay, there's only Zelia. There was just not enough around. If they made that rotation faster with Arthas, they could have tried and make an attempt for Snitch. But especially with Zelia rotating in, there was no hope of killing Hanzo. That Divine Shield would have been out in time. I can't believe Snitch didn't burn his jump either. He was willing to sit there and basically he had the composure to make sure they didn't burn that cooldown. Heads up play by him. Yeah, there was just not enough damage output and he knew that. Nice move. Okay, here comes the uh, Cocoon. What do they get out of this? They need to try and make a play here. We have Greymane coming into the mid lane. There's already an attempt to go for Zelia, but we see the Haka coming in. The silence in isolation immediately on Rosmek. He survives for now. Drops his ult as well. No kill so far, but Snitch is insanely low. Nanda wants to take him down, but the Divine Shield saves him. And the counter kill has more fury and falls Dignitas with another kill. But Falstead shows up. Dark Mongol get Poik trying to get him. Go for the throw to allow Poik to escape from the fight. And Team Dignitas takes an engage from Diamond Skin and makes it two kills of their own. Well done. And of course, the 13 talent played a big role here too. They had the power spike in that fight and that really worked well. But it was impressive at the beginning how Gul'dan was kept alive, but also Dignitas with perfect reactions here. Moving the Haka in, Ubi was immediately present, hits the isolation, which makes it difficult for Gul'dan to really have that effect in the team fight. And yeah, great play here. So Dignitas, again, massive leap. Five kills against one, nearly a two, two levels ahead at this point. And they just, they, they just take the map. 14, keep being open in the middle here. The keep wall takes some damage but with multiple members here. Diamond Skin, Ding Ding Toss. Yeah, it's much more in the bottom. They're trying to stretch their opponents thin wherever they can here. Not allow for them to have a global advantage with that false set, keeping him near the fight with the dragon buying as much time as possible. 13 is looming around the corner, but it's still half a level away for Diamond Skin, and their hope here is just to burn the dragon. Yeah, one of the big things in the last team fight was also Zelia just holding back the Divine Shield, and at the last moment, he never threw it out prematurely. And so they had a lot of resources available as Diamond Skin already sacrificed a lot of theirs. And now they are looking at nearly a three level lead. So this is really a setup in which Dignitas even has an... If they take more structures, they have a chance to hit 16 before Diamond Skin uh, gets control of their 13 talents. Probably not going to happen here, but the discrepancy is still going to be massive. Yeah, it's an illustration of how far ahead they are. Yeah. They are in a spot where the Giants are spawning on the bottom right for Diamond Skin. Let's see if they want to maybe move into those. Diamond Skin looking for a fight on potentially the opposing side. Bubba will scout it out. But with multiple members there and Dahaka on the top side, knowing that he can burrow in at any point, it's best to just wait it out and see what happens here. Now, the 13 power spike that you mentioned in the draft is here. Having that giant killer on Falstad is helpful against Muradin if they can find a spot to get the kill. Yeah, he's uh, sitting at 26 right now in Season Marksman. We have also Gul'dan, just to give you a bit of an update on his level 1 uh, currently on the Effort Corruption at 34 stacks, so he's 
six short of completing it. Robadova currently with his level one talent sitting at 20 globes for his regeneration master. So their quest talents are not completed yet. Same goes for Arthur's. Nanda with his level four talent is currently at 117, so he needs another uh, 33 to complete it. The problem for Diamond Skin is really that they are so far behind that it's going to take ages for them to find a point where they are even talents as their opponent. So the 13 talents are strong, but Dignitas just has 16 already, and that is so scary. If you look at that push here at the bot lane, even utilizing the aura of the night camp now, they can easily push this keep. There is nothing Diamond Skin can do about this. Yeah, Dignitas can be forceful here. And they are. All five members down, moving in for the keep, chunking it slowly. Rossman doing his best here for some damage on that frontline tank. But Uka on the back, they have no worry of being poked down, and there it is, a keep at 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, I want to highlight one thing a bit, and this is how important it is for Dignitas to make these moves, because it's important that they stack it with the camp as well. Diamond Skin is three levels behind, but as we said before, with Cocoon, Gust, and Horrify, you can always find a kill. And if you get kills when you're this far behind, it nets you an insane amount of experience, and it really helps you to close the gap. So Dignitas did not just simply meaningless push in. They took two camps, used the aura, and then they started to very methodically take down the bottom keep. And they need to make these moves while they are still a talent ahead. So the more ground they gain now, the better in the long run. Because eventually, Diamond Skin could hit the 16. And the whole game plan of Diamond Skin is to delay it until they do. Diamond Skin playing with fire, though. Goes in for each on the right side. An arrow comes out to punish him. Dark Monk's able to escape. Nande steps forward with the help of Robodoba. They're taking a fight at a disadvantage and hoping to work with it here. Twilight Dream on top of the Muradin, and they pull it off. They get a kill, but they trade out their Anubrak. Yeah, there was a cocoon in the back against Wubi, so that turned the entire fight into a five versus four, basically, since Wubi could. The entire fight moved away from Cocoon, so nobody could burn that down. But then the Horrify hits, and unfortunately for them, it pushed Hanzo away and not into the fight. They get the kill against against Muradin, but they would really have loved to kill Hanzo first, because he's the one with the low hit point pool. If they could have pushed him into the right direction, they could have uh, killed both. Arthas able to lay on the bottom side, 16 right around the corner. Diamond Skin trying to just survive now, fighting for every hope of getting back in this game against their opponents, and that kill was definitely something that's marginal and helpful. But if Dignitas gets a dragon, things get worse for them. Ah, there it is. Mm. Night Camp pushing the top, Catapults on the bottom, a huge dragon pushing down your middle lane. Diamond Skin, they're hurting. Yeah, but right now they have 16, so Dignitas can't really go full core. That time has a low 16 versus 16, you don't really want to risk it. Taking another keep would help. The top lane pushes already. That's where we see the, another night camp coming in. So they get value on two lanes. But this is really that five versus five setup. And now Muradin is back. So now they can actually see if they can maybe get a kill and make even a bit more happen here. There goes the well. Everyone on Diamond Skin taps it to make sure they're topped off in case the fight does break out. And they're just trying to get a bit concave on the side. Dragon Knight does go forward with a kick on Ballstad. He's able to bit him in a little bit further than normal, while Nande takes a drag on the left, trying to hold the front line for the team. And all said and done, Diamond Skin is holding in there. Yeah, they're holding for now, but they are still far behind, and 20 is their next biggest problem. There's a drag on the other hand. Nanda, all right, pops the army, so it looks like they are trying to engage right now. Needed to survive, but Falstead just gets blown apart by Draymane. He's down, Nanda being attacked again, Horrify comes in, but that's more to save them and not to actually take someone down and isolate him. So at this point, it seems very unlikely that Diamond Skin can hold on for longer. They keep falls, and they are starting to look at the core. Dignitas moving in for that core. They do have a gray main, and with the minion wave, they should be able to put some damage on it. A good 19 seconds before fall sets even on the field. Triple catapults in the back, so that's really going to help once they start to lock on, and that's what they're looking for here. They're trying to get some damage in with the catapults already delivering, and they are doing exactly that, which forces Rocksmack further to the front since he needs to take them down. But the kill attempt against Robotova, he barely moves away. JPL jumps after him and takes him on. Fawcett comes out, will have a Mighty Gust, but no tank available here without a new Brack. Arthas will have to be the one on the front line. JPL gets picked up on the back right behind Keith in the enemy territory, a little bit too far. 20 right on the horizon here for Dignitas, and they'll decide to start pulling back and wait for that Storm Town to come in. But Fawcett has used Mighty Gust. He has to be careful as he gets chunked by Hanzo. Yeah, he is losing half his hit points in one single blow. There's also the 20 now. And that means, as you already said, Storm Talents are ready for Dignitas, and they are already looking strong. 80% left on the core for 
diamond skin. This is a rough game for them. Eight kills against three, but it's really just the macro game that is the most impressive on the side of Dignitas. They've defended. The catapult pushing middle and bottom, as you mentioned, should help them get some experience coming their way. They would love to get 20 themselves, but the next Dragon Shrine should be up around level 19 for Diamond Skin, so they will still be fighting a talent behind an important one of that. Yeah, and another Dragon Knight would already mean uh, most likely the end of the game here. Two keeps down, that's a big problem as is, even with a global hero to try and outpush these lanes. But this is a rough spot for Diamond Skin to be in. They need to soak one and a half levels while Dignitas is looking for a fight, is looking for the objective. This is tough. If you get an isolation kill, if you get a good combo with Cocoon and get a kill, maybe you can run a four versus five scenario for a while. But outside of that, they have very little chances to make a comeback here. Some common strategies in the past is to find that Dehaka and pick him off. We'll be playing safe though and preventing that from occurring. We'll be in the top side, grabs a shrine. And now it's all about that dragon. Dehaka actually burrows in the middle too. Diamond Skin is aware of that. They heard the sound. Even <laughs> Pokey trying to find him. Yeah, we'll be just trying to see if we can maybe sneak something in. So Arthur's now at the bottom, but here comes the engage again. Stormbolt is being missed. Already false that using his old so does Anubara. Cocoon is used. Robot overload. Here comes the immediate move by Wolfjaws. He's trying to get silence in, but they're on the run right now. They need to try and fight here. They will have to take a bad fight, and if they can win it, then they have a chance. But it's Gul'dan that falls. He goes down. And now, of course, we have Dignitas with all the Trump cards in their hands. They got everything set up here. 45 seconds until Gul'dan is back. Nande runs the top, hoping to delay. But there is a duo, a dynamic duo here. Poikin and Wubby willing to move in for a fight and stop him from doing that, which should net them the dragon. A new back in the middle, trying to make space. Snitch jumps over the wall, goes in for the auto attack. Can he get the final blow? There it is, another pickup. And the Dragonite has been taken too. We saw two heroes move to the top lane to try and prevent it by taking the shrine, but now we have the Dragonite moving through the middle. We have 10 kills against three. Still a two-level lead for Team Dignitas. 21 to 19. And that core has already lost all its shields. Dignitas goes in an indominant fashion. Ends game number one. They take the lead in the best of five series against Team Diamond Skin. A rough journey there for Diamond Skin, but Dignitas showing why they are some of the best here in Europe at the moment. Clean and clear with their decision making, picking off keeps when they can, taking their talent advantage moving forward, and for the most part, keeping a 2-3 level lead of their opponents during the entire duration of the game. Dignitas, looking to close out this one early. Yeah, for Diamond Skin, I feel once that level 20 was hit for Dignitas, they needed to fight. You can't expect that you will fall that. I feel they looked for opportunities, they didn't find them, but at some point, even if there's a bad fight, you have to take it since if you move back and the Dragonite is claimed that late in the game, yep. you already lost two keeps, it's over. So they were always trying to see if they can maybe make a play with Cocoon, with uh, Mighty Gust. But once they got chased in the middle and they were running away, this is really the moment where you just have to say, okay, this is a horrible fight for us, but it's the only fight we have, so let's take it and not just try to save ourselves. We need to find a kill here. If you turn around there, try to work with Cocoon, maybe with Horrify, I feel it's the only opportunity that you'll get because once they move out, it opens the map up for Dignitas to take the Dragonite. They even lost the Nuburak on the way back as they did also with, I feel, Melfury and Gul'dan were well pressured there. So it was a rough game for them. Dignitas just controlled the macro game and the experience from start to finish. Yeah, when you've caught it back so far that your Gul'dan is your front line, you know you've lost that fight. Let's go ahead and look at the global standings here for HGC and where all our teams currently reside as we head into week number two. North America has a decent amount of 1-0s here with Temple Storm Team 12 and Team Freedom all tied up, and that should change today as we'll have Temple Storm and Team 12 facing off. Fnatic, a couple of 2-0s already as we have had Fnatic win early. Team Liquid won last week with their 2-0. They have a chance to continue holding that number one spot as they have their match later on this weekend. And China and Korea here on the bottom side. Yeah, the 3-0 for Ballistics after a very impressive victory over KSV Black on the first play day. It was also something that KSV wasn't really too happy about. He said that a few of the players apparently were on a vacation shortly before that, so that's why they said, ah, we feel still a bit rusty. We're not really on the top of our game just yet. When I estimated the opponent slightly, and right now find themselves in the spot where they have to attack from behind. For Ballistics, everything is going according to plan, though. They're looking strong at this point. Well, let's get ready for Battleground number two. Has a diamond skin. Ta 